Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to talk about how to find parts for these receivers. This is a question I get every now and then when I uh, look at my comments section on some of my videos. People want to know where do you get parts for these and how do you find them? The number one sources for parts for these receivers are Mauser.com and Digikey.com. You can find just about anything for these receivers that isn't cosmetic or a transformer or a mechanical part like a heat sink on Mauser or a Digikey. You can find all the transistors, all the capacitors, the fuses, diodes, pretty much anything you find on a circuit board you can find on Mauser or Digikey. That's especially true for these early to mid 70s receivers because these came out before integrated circuits got popular. What happened in the uh, later 1970s and into the 80s was companies created their own proprietary integrated circuits and the bad thing about that is they fail and you can't find them. So you gotta build your own, figure out what they were, or just find a used one and pay like way more than you should on eBay or something. So we're gonna stick to these basic ones right here. I'll walk you through how I find parts for them and you'll see that it's really not that hard. It's quite easy actually. So let's go. So we're gonna use this 2215B as our example for this video. So when you are restoring a receiver, let's look at our amplifier board for a second, the power amplifier board. You're interested in replacing two main things. Those things are capacitors, these can things, these little blue things, these orange things. And the second thing is semiconductors. What is a semiconductor? Well, in this receiver, that would be a transistor or a diode. So these guys right here, these are transistors, these little black half circle looking things. These things bolted to the heatsink, those are transistors. And I don't see any diodes on the power amplifier board, but if we go over here to the power supply board, we can see these guys are diodes and these guys are diodes here. Uh, those don't look like modern diodes. Modern diodes look like uh, basically just black resistors. But uh, those are the things we're concerned with replacing on the circuit boards when we're going to restore a receiver. So I'm going to show you how I find each of those on Mauser. So like I said, we're going to be looking for capacitors and semiconductors in uh, this video. So first let's talk about the different kinds of capacitors you might need for your receiver. There's two kinds of circuits basically going on in this receiver. You have circuits that are for power and circuits that are for signal. Each of those circuits is going to take a different kind of capacitor. The capacitor that you use for power related circuits is the Nichicon UPW series. That's just the one that I like. There's others you can choose from but that's the one I'm going to recommend here. And to be clear, no one's sponsoring any part of this video, not Mauser, not Nichicon. This is just really, this really is what I use. For audio signals, you will want to use either Nichicon KA series for, in my opinion, anything above 3.3 microfarads. Or for 3.3 and lower, I use Wima, 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 however you pronounce it, W-I-M-A, uh, NKS series. MKS series film capacitors, um, there's a lot of debate on what capacitor is the best capacitor for audio signals in the forums, like Audio Karma. I find that uh, the MKS series by Wima is just fine. Let's walk through how to find a PW series capacitor. All we do is we go to Mauser and we type in UPW. And the reason we're typing in UPW is that is what every PW series capacitor starts with. So we look at the screen here, we say aluminum electrolytic capacitors radio leaded. And we've been given a list of all 753 PW series capacitors that Mauser sells. So let's say we need a 4.7 microfarad. 50 volt capacitor. We apply these filters and we see that uh, we've got two to choose from. So let's say we need 
four of them for the circuit board we are rebuilding. We're going to click buy after we type in four. So let's say now we're going through our build materials on our receiver's service manual and now we need a audio grade capacitor for a signal path circuit. Let's open a new tab just because we might have to go back to the PW series. We go back to mouse over here, now we go UKA. And now we click capacitors again. Now we've got a list of all 128 UKA series capacitors that Mauser carries. So let's say we need a 47 microfarad 25 volt capacitor. We apply these filters and there it is. We've got 177 in stock. We need two of them. One for each channel maybe. So we're going to click buy. That's great. Let's continue shopping here. Sometimes you might find that in the uh, preamplifier, for example, there might be a capacitor in there that says BP. That means bipolar. So what you want to do is go UES. And that is the Nichicon capacitor that is bipolar. If you find that the KA series capacitor you need is not available, you can also go with an Elna Silmic 2 capacitor. For that, you type in RFS. And that is the name for the Elnacimic 2 capacitors. So let's go aluminum electrolytic capacitors right here again. And here they are, Elna brand. It says Silmic 2. These are good audio grade capacitors. Now let's talk about the WEMA capacitors. If you have something that is a low capacitance like 1 or 0.47 microfarad, type in MKS right here. You'll want to click Film Capacitors. Now this you have to be a little careful with because these film capacitors can come in very, very high voltage ratings and that means they're going to be very big. So let's say you need a 1 microfarad capacitor. So we'll click 1 microfarad. And all we're really going to need is 50 volts. So let's apply these filters. It's going to narrow it down quite a bit for us and we see all kinds of options here. Next thing we'll need to look for is the lead spacing. This is important because film capacitors can get kind of wide. If you're replacing a one microfarad capacitor on a vintage receiver, it's likely going to have a lead spacing of 2.5 millimeters. So let's apply that and see what we've got here. And you see we've got two to choose from. Well, really we have one to choose from. This, this is expected, so it's not in stock yet, but this one here is in stock. General film capacitors is just fine for me, and let's say we have four of them. So let's click buy, and we've got it. I'll take a minute here to no talk about how I buy capacitors when I'm doing this stuff. Since I'm rebuilding quite a few receivers, or, you know, probably going to rebuild another one, when I buy something like this, I will always buy at least ten. And I do that because then I've got parts in stock. Like, there's a few receivers out there that I could rebuild without buying anything right now because I keep all these capacitors and transistors in stock because I bought 10 or 20 or whatever when I bought these last. Some parts, like a KSA 992 transistor, that's in everything. Like, it's used all the time. So I buy those 100 at a time, and I get a pretty good price break when I do that. That brings us into our next thing, semiconductors. Semiconductors is a little bit more difficult to find the correct one of because they've got weird code names, their specifications are hard to understand. They're not just 10 microfarad, 25 volt like a capacitor, it's pretty simple. Transistors have all kinds of different values and it's not quite easy to understand for somebody who's not uh, well versed in electronics. The transistors have little names on them. On these vintage receivers, they generally start with 2S. One you'll find on Pioneers pretty often is 2SA733. That's one that you'll want to replace every time with a KSA992. And then on Marantz receivers, you might find a 2SC1000s on the Phono preamp, or even the preamplifier boards, you want to replace those with KSC1845s. How do I know this? I've just been doing this. But the way you can tell if you don't know is you take that number, the 2S whatever, and you Google it. So let's Google right now 
H2SA733. What I meant to add was uh, the word replacement. In that way, it's going to take us to audiokarma.org, and look, it's already brought us to my favorite page, which is uh, this. So let's look for our 2SA733 right here. It wants us to use KSA 992. Or how about our 2SC 1000 that I mentioned? It wants us to use KSC 1845. So what did this? What does this mean? All right, let's go back to Mauser here. We're gonna type in KSA 992. Here it is. We see on Semi Fairchild. That's the good brand. That's what you're gonna want. So you see we have four options here for basically the same part. What I like to do is I like to buy the ones that are on tape and reel because that means they're in like a piece of paper and you can kind of pull them out as needed. So we're going to go over here we're going to look at packaging and we see ammo pack so that's what we want that's going to be on the tape and reel. You can see it's got the kink to lead and in fact I'll, I'll pull it out for you right now. So here they are, KSA 992's. And what I like about the, the kink lead on the, uh, the ammo pack is you can hook these up to your Peak Atlas DCA 55, measure the gain, and then just write it here and just do them all at once. So then when you're looking to get a matched pair for your power amplifier, it's right here. You just find two that uh, have a matching number. And if you have a hundred of these, you're probably going to find a matched pair pretty easily. So that's why I like this. So that's how you find transistor replacements. You just Google the one that you find in the service manual or written on your transistor and then follow it with the word replacement and then check the Audio Karma forums to see what people have recommended in the past. Try to find more than one recommendation just to kind of solidify that it is a good choice. The same thing is going to happen for diodes. You may find a diode part number in your service manual. You just Google that number and then replacement and then you'll find it in the forums. And then you can look up a modern part number in Mauser, like 1N4148 right here. This is used in all kinds of stuff. Look, one million in stock. That is how popular the 1N4148 is. It's in everything, even modern stuff. You buy a hundred, you're paying five bucks for a hundred of them. You buy five hundred, you're paying, oh, what's three times five? Fifteen dollars for five hundred parts. One on four one four eight is awesome. It actually has its own Wikipedia page. I found it one day. Now, if you went to this video hoping to find information on light bulbs, uh, stuff like that, you can go to dgwojo.com. Uh, that's just the guy that I use. There's other websites that are good. There's eBay listings that are probably okay. Um, there's lots of places to get lights, but I just happen to like using dgwojo.com because Dave has given me good service all these years. If this is a lot for you and you want to buy a kit, I bought a kit once from irebuildmarantz.com, but I just checked the website and they are done doing that. And I don't blame them because it's kind of a pain in the butt to create kits for these things. So. The other thing I've found is listings on eBay. I can't recommend those because I've never bought them, but I don't really see why they wouldn't be good for somebody who doesn't want to go through and find all the parts for their receiver for getting it restored. Also, lots of people on the forums have made recap lists for these receivers. Pioneer receivers especially. There's an Audio Karma user named Mark the Fixer. He's made a lot of build materials for replacement parts for Pioneer receivers. And I actually use those to this day to find substitutes. And I started using those when I was getting into this stuff and learning kind of how to do this. Alright, that's all I've got for this video. I'll see you in the next one.